With our building blocks table reorganized according to connectedness, rather than by the number of electron pair domains, and the way in which these building blocks combine to form functional groups, we are almost ready to interpret an organic molecule, but first we must cover a few structure drawing conventions. The first of which is the use of implied atoms in chemical drawings. The two atoms that are governed by this convention are carbon and hydrogen. In the case of carbon, while the atoms are drawn, they're not explicitly labeled. And what I mean by that is in a chemical drawing, at each vertex or at each free, uh, free end that is unlabeled, it, it will be inferred as a carbon atom. Take, for example, the upper left structure. We can see we have a vertex point right here, and even though it's not labeled as being carbon, it still is, we could still assume it to be a carbon atom. And then if we look at each free end, we could also see that uh, those are not labeled either, but those are also carbon atoms. And this is shown in the drawings on the right. If we now take a look at the other two examples, in the middle molecule, we could see that we have three vertices, each of which would be a carbon atom, and three free ends. Therefore, there are a total of six implied carbons in this compound. And in the final compound below, we could see that we have one vertex and three free ends. And notice that these two uh, atoms on either end of the triple bond don't necessarily fall into the category of being a vertex or of being on a free end, but since they're unlabeled atoms um, on each side of a triple bond, we could assume them to be uh, carbon atoms. While carbon atoms are drawn but not explicitly labeled in an organic structure, hydrogen atoms connected to carbon atoms are not explicitly drawn and are implied. Based on the rules we've established about formal charge, we know that each carbon atom, in order to remain neutral, must have four bonds associated with it. So if we take a look at our top structure and take a look at any carbon atom, we could see that the carbon atom in the middle has two bonds connected to it already. So in order to remain neutral, there are going to be two implied uh, carbon to hydrogen bonds on this molecule. On the two free ends, uh, there's uh, only one bond associated with each carbon atom, so we could uh, we know that there should be three implied carbon to hydrogen bonds on the free loose ends. And if we look at the structure on the right, that's exactly what we see. Three carbon to hydrogen bonds on each of the carbon atoms on the end, and two on the carbon in the middle. The molecule below differs only slightly in that there is a double bond present. Uh, so if we take a look at the carbon atoms associated with this double bond, uh, the carbon atom on the right here has three bonds associated with it, uh, one single bond and uh, one double bond. So we, could, we know that there should be one implied hydrogen associated with this carbon atom. On the other uh, carbon atom, however, associated with the double bond, it already has its full four bonds, it already has a full octet, and it's already neutral. So there are no implied hydrogen atoms on this uh, carbon atom. Now if we take a look at the free ends, uh, as was in the case before, there are three implied hydrogens on each of these atoms, and on the final carbon there are two implied hydrogens there, because it already has two bonds associated with it. And once again, this is exactly what we see on the structure on the right. In our final example, each carbon surrounding the triple bond already has three bonds associated with it, and will therefore not have any implied hydrogen atoms. Um, the free loose ends, once again, will have three hydrogens um, that are implied, and then the carbon right here, notice it has only three bonds associated with it, so there will be one implied hydrogen on this carbon atom. And if we look at the structure on the right, once again that's indeed what we see. Let's summarize this slide now and establish the differences between implied carbon and implied hydrogen atoms. Implied carbon atoms are most often not explicitly drawn. Um, they're located at the vertices or the free ends of an organic molecule and are not explicitly labeled. Implied hydrogens, specifically those that are carbon to hydrogen bonds, are not explicitly drawn and must be implied on their own. If a hydrogen atom is connected to a non-carbon atom, which is an example we'll see in a subsequent slide, it will be explicitly drawn for you. There are a few main ideas to take out of this slide. First, if we take a look at any heteroatom, in other words, any atom that is not carbon or hydrogen, we could see that they do not have implied hydrogens on it. So each oxygen atom that would have a hydrogen on it, it's explicitly drawn for you. And we could also see this in the carboxylic acid functional group at the top of the page. The next point to take out of this slide is that certain groups can be abbreviated, such as the example we see of this carboxylic acid.
what specific abbreviations are used for certain groups, as well as how to infer their Lewis structures from these abbreviations, will be a skill that you develop as we begin to see more organic molecules. The final main idea of this slide involves organic chemistry being a three-dimensional subject confined to a two-dimensional world. How do we account for the three-dimensional nature of an organic molecule on a single sheet of paper? Well, if we take a look at the five carbon atom chain highlighted on prestacyclin, and we were to draw on each of the implied hydrogen atoms for this five carbon chain, what we can see is that the structure I'm highlighting now is not a correct representation of uh, how these uh, implied hydrogen atoms exist in space. Based off of what we've learned from the organic building blocks, we know that any atom that contains four electron pair domains, as each of the carbon atoms in this five carbon structure do, they will adopt tetrahedral geometry and have to have bond angles of 109.5 degrees. The only way to satisfy this is if the hydrogen atoms were to be above and below the plane of the page. And how do we account for this in our chemical drawing? Well, we use wedges or dashes. A wedge bond will indicate that a atom is coming out towards us or above the plane of the page, while a dash bond will indicate that the uh, atom is going below the plane of the page and going away from us. The example on the bottom right of this page is one of the most commonly made examples for a beginning organic chemist to make. And notice that there's no way for us to tell where these uh, hydrogen atoms lie in space based on the way they're drawn here. The only way for us to correctly represent these hydrogen atoms in space is to draw a wedged and a dashed bond coming off each vertex of our five carbon chain. One convention that you've probably already picked up on is that carbon chains are represented as zigzag lines. If we take a look at this structure here, we can see that the carbon backbone is uh, represented by this zigzag line here. A second convention that we've already covered is to leave out carbon and hydrogen atoms um, when we don't need them to interpret an organic structure. The following convention is that we will always show electron lone pairs and formal charges in an organic molecule, and we could see this in the molecules below where each oxygen atom has uh, lone pairs on it, or in the very bottom example where uh, one of these carbon atoms is positively charged. Finally, when only a small portion of an organic molecule is of interest, we will use a partial structure convention. For instance, if we were only concerned with the carboxylic acid functional group of a much larger organic molecule, we could use a squiggly line or a partial structure convention to represent the rest of this molecule rather than draw it out. Last but not least, I'll warn you of this now. Do not get fooled into forgetting implied hydrogen atoms. It is one of the easiest traps to fall into when t looking at an organic structure. Take for example the molecules below. Uh, one, has a, one is a carbocation, while the other one is a completely neutral structure. And while identifying the implied hydrogens on the free ends of each molecule is probably an easy uh, task to do, a common mistake is to forget the last implied hydrogen on the neutral carbon. Since the structure on the left is a carbocation, there are no implied hydrogens associated with that center carbon atom. But the molecule on the right do not forget to include that one carbon-hydrogen bond that is missing.